everyone. This is Bhavish Goswami. I'm the founder and CEO of CloudAd, a cloud training and consulting company. And today, we're going to talk about recently launched Intel's Xeon 4th generation processor and how it helps in data transformation. With me, I have Somer. He's been part of uh, Intel India for over 20 years, right? Really long time. In his current role as a director and head of uh, customer and partner engineering for Intel India, he's interested uh, to drive the best customer ROI through unlocking the value of Intel platforms and technologies. Somer, welcome to this talk. Thank you, Bhavesh. Thanks for welcoming me here. So, um, Somer, um, you know, we're going to talk about the 4th gen Xeon digital transformation, right? And um, this is probably the most dynamic time in our life, right? I mean, just a few years ago, companies had one corporate data center, and that was probably it, right? Now they have, of course, a data center, but they have cloud, they have edge locations, right? They have to have workloads that work across all these different uh, segments, uh, whether there is on-premises or cloud or edge, and uh, you know all the complexities that kind of come with that, right? So, um, um, according to you, what challenges an organization faces in this dynamic uh, landscape, right, where they have to handle this multiple kind of environments? The, we at Intel, we believe we are at a strategic inflection point. The problems of today and tomorrow, they're so complex and interconnected and can only be solved through technology, right? Which means there's a collaboration across disciplines, across borders, and across the various solutions that you can offer for the market. Mm -hmm. Now, what Intel, as we are talking about, we talk about is five superpowers. You may have heard about it. We talk about AI, we talk about compute, connectivity, the edge to cloud infrastructure that you touched upon. We also bring in a conversation called sensing. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of the superpowers is, the more ubiquitous it becomes, the more powerful it is it unlocks more potential for what it brings to the table. An organization is not only trying to solve problems for today, but also tomorrow, which means they have to be, be there and ahead of what's available with respect to technology. So solving problems for today and tomorrow is problem number one. Second, if you look at it, there is sustainability. It has to be done in a sustainable way, right? right? So sustainability is the second conversation you drive. Mm -hmm. The third, security. I mean, if you really look about next generation problem, you and I don't even know what security issues could exist. So banking is secure is number three. And last but not the least, I at least haven't heard budgets going up. Yeah. So the cost envelope of this conversation is every organization has to deal with. So if you think about that, the complexity of the problem for today and tomorrow, security, sustainability, and TCO, those I think are the biggest challenges that organizations are dealing with today. Absolutely, I mean, if you really look at this, the life, or the work, uh, uh, what effort an organization has to put to you know, protect themselves and to derive value out of the data that they have. I think the work that they need to do has definitely gone up a couple of notches in the last few years. When you try to make it a full stack conversation where you go from hardware to software enhanced to really services at time, the second piece to bring up security is we believe that if you are able to build these security issues down to hardware or solutions down to hardware, mm -hmm. more often than not, you know, you'll find probably they're more mature and more robust versus something that's in the software and application level. But I'm sure uh, this is something that you and I will deal with as we go forward. Absolutely. So, um, Somer, as we discussed, there are so many different kind of infrastructure that a client has, from on-premises to cloud to edge, and they have different kinds of workloads. And this workload, sometimes they have to run on all the different uh, segments that a customer has, right? Like an AI model could be working on premises, could be working on the edge, right? So uh, how does a customer manage these varieties of workloads across varieties of these platforms? Is there any, what would you recommend them that how should they make sure that their workloads are working well across these different segments? I talked about the complexity of today and tomorrow. So one part of complexity, as you said, it has to work across various kind of infrastructures seamlessly. That's what you touch upon. The second you have to talk about is the different kinds of workloads, which you also kind of value to it. You know, what you need to do for high performance computing versus an AI you talked about versus a storage, right? Or you know, take your pick, right? Analytics. Mm -hmm. Each of these workloads has specific requirements to deal with. Correct. So what really needs to happen is that it's very difficult or theoretically, in my view, for somebody like us who understands technology, it's very difficult to bind an argument that general purpose core could achieve all of this. 
So what organizations really need to look back, going to the first problem is to really look at is, you know, addressing a problem of today and tomorrow, you really want to be able to see one thing, mm -hmm. that you are increasingly moving your roadmap towards, you know, purpose-built solutions, okay. right? Where you are actually addressing the conversation with respect to a particular requirement, so HPCOI. That's kind of number one, right? Okay. The second thing, obvious one, is, is the sustainability and the cost. Are you, is your solution dynamically adjusting to what you really need from a cost perspective? Right, and automatic, if your performance, so typically what happens is if you want to drive more performance for an application or computer intensive, your cost may go up, mm -hmm. right? But if it's not, are you able to bring it down dynamically, right? So think about purpose-built solution which dynamically adjusts to what's the cost requirement or the power requirement, number two. Now, what we also believe, right, AI has become so pervasive, mm -hmm. right? It's no longer something as an afterthought, Correct. right? So you really need to be able at an architecture level think about how pervasive it can be, Correct. right? Are you having solution, going back to my answer on security before, are you able to bring it down to the you know, hardware level, to the core level, where each application or a VM in, in the cloud sense that you talk about mm -hmm. is able to leverage that capability. Correct. And last but not least, you are generating a lot of data in this. Correct. And the expectations of the customer are just going up. So if you see the pace, and I'm sure you are living that as well, if you see the pace of technology that I talked about in the beginning in terms of today's and tomorrow's, it really needs to be open because that's where the action is. Correct. If you get locked into a proprietary conversion, not going to happen, right? So open, we have a kind of leveraging an open-based you know, application set or an infrastructure set to you know, look at a forward-looking roadmap, looking at purpose-built solutions and driving the security that you need. To me, those are the paths that organizations need to be able to take to get to where they want to be. I think that uh, um, in, in Intel, um, um, Xeon, the fourth version that we're talking about, uh, they have purpose built a uh, lot of those technologies to accelerate workloads like AI and ML. For, for example, in HPC, you may have heard about we introduced something called Xeon Max, right. which has high memory bandwidth built into this, high bandwidth memory built into this, and just increases the performance. But if you're talking about a, like a database conversation, mm -hmm. If, um, and since you are in the, in the space, in a database, the, what really comes up is the I.O. between the CPU and the, and the database, right? So you really need to be having an acceleration, which is kind of enhancing the analytics of that I.O. Mm -hmm. So we have something called Intel In-Memory Analytics Accelerator, or IAA, that is able to do that, right? Fantastic. So one thing about, you should think about is power application, right? What do you really need to do? Similarly, if you go into, for example, containers or microservices in a cloud environment, right? Mm -hmm. You will need to be able to do mem copy fast here and there. Correct. So we have something called for streaming, called DSA, for streaming and uh, acceleration, right? So which specifically is relevant to your, for your microservices conversation. Right. Now that's piece one, from a workload, acceleration, what have you. The second thing that I touched upon is, uh, are you able to make AI pervasive, Correct. right? So what we have done is in, uh, Besides the general purpose, Xeon, by the way, has been a known platform for inferencing, well-established, 100 million CPUs, yep. install base, what have you, right? So inferencing is done, okay? The question is, if you really look at uh, you know, AI today, you're really talking about matrix, right? How are you doing about chat GPT, which is a generative algorithm, right? Okay. So we are, not, we are introducing something called advanced matrix extensions. That okay. specifically talks about matrix, uh, you know, I would say metrics instructions mm -hmm. to us to make it simpler. How do you fast track or accelerate that in an AI conversation Correct. specific to training? Correct. Now that's part one. We have something that you could use to make it faster, but we have made it pervasive. Every core, every core has AMX built into it, which means you're not related to what's AMX is available in the CPU bot, but if that CPU has X number of cores, X number of virtual machines, are you able to do that, right? So Correct. piece one is a conversation about specific workloads, specific um, acceleration to meet that workloads. The second piece of this conversation I talked about is the interconnect. I told you this interplay between powers and interplay database to storage right. to computation are interlinked conversations. So we have brought in capabilities to be able to do that, right? For example, you have something called dynamic load balancing. Okay. It looks at your throughput and is able to, you know, going back to a classical traveling salesman problem, right? How do you make sure that you have optimized the usage of the CPU to the queue of, of you know, services that you need to offer. Dynamic load balancing, right? Last but not least, I'll bring into this conversation on what you talk about, you know, the network traffic. You know, being a silicon guy myself, and, and you may have lived it too, very, very, very soon in silicon design, 
what really comes up is that the challenge is not the gate or the transistor. It's the I.O. between the gate, you know, the gate and the second transistor or second gate, right? Okay. Even in computation now, as you really think about it, right, you think about how do you accelerate that I.O.? I touch upon BEM copy a little bit, right? But we have something called quick assist technology. So if you're moving from your I.O. NIC card as an example to your computation, you think about how do I compress, decompress? How do I, you know, kind of encrypt, decrypt? The AES algorithms that you have. You take that chain, can you make it faster? So we have something called quick assist technology to do that. We have introduced something called Trust Domain Extensions, or TDX. It's, a, it's, it's an extension to the SGX we already did for confidential computing. Okay. So you'll see players like Microsoft talking about it. Mm -hmm. But think about purposeful accelerators, the interconnects, the pervasiveness of AI, and the security through TDX. Fantastic. So basically, it's it's not just uh, you know a single horse for every course. It's like horses for courses. It's it's it provides acceleration depending on your workload, and really helps you achieve uh, the efficiency at the workload level. We have been one of the first cases of driving sustainable solution. Okay. We have a uh, we have a solution called liquid immersion cooling that was implemented by PhonePay in their data centers just to make sure that they have a sustainable solution for it. Okay, but when you talk about sustainability, you know, Bhavesh, there are, again, you know, you can start talking. Typically, it's a storage or, or a system level conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So when you talk about liquid immersion cooling, you essentially are talking about a system at a system level. What technologies and capabilities we bring in to be able to make an end-to-end -end solution for the customer, like okay. phone pay in this example. All right. And we start in a few ways. We first we do is that our CPUs are immersion ready. So your components need to be immersion, and that's what we kind of do, right? The second thing that we do is we make it make sure that we're working with the partner system, like a GRC or a submar, to be enabling them to be able to do that. Third, we invest in a lot of forward-looking technology. We have an innovation center that we go and talk about what are next generation those technologies that you can need to invest in for sustainable, right? If you look at Xeon Fortinem, given that you are actually, instead of a general purpose compute, you're actually reducing the computation when you need to accelerators, by default, they typically should see lower power consumption, okay? So generally, you can see that at least in Sapphire Rapids or Xeon Fordson, we're actually seeing a 2.9x performance improvement or performance per watt improvement versus per, you know prior gen, oh. number one, right? That's and great. by the way, when you do Sapphire Rapids or Xeon Fordson, we are actually, you can go in all power mode, right? Okay. Then you get a full blast of all the capabilities I just talked about. But if you go in a power to optimize mode, which we have created as a mode there, you actually, off the bat, you get a 20% reduction. So those are kind of things at a component level specific to Xeon Fords and that we're trying to bail in, because you're absolutely right. Sustainability is a big goal for Intel as well. How does Intel help customers and partners in this real transformation journey? There was a loss, uh, Almos National Lab, which is an HPC lab. Okay. Give, um, as I said, we discussed the product as customer in. When they used the Xeon Max, they were able to actually get a 4x improvement on their performance, okay. okay? At the same time, it is so transparent that they could seamlessly kind of move over their binaries from their previous generation to this generation. Mm -hmm. So at a customer level, we are trying to make sure that the transformation is simpler and faster and giving a better performance. One example. Another example, you know, since we're leaving 5G in India right now, there's Telefonica, right? And if you hear Telefonica CTO talk about, he'll talk about the future as he thinks about in respect to 5G software-defined networks. Mm -hmm. And the whole generation is based upon the virtualization of the network functions, which is made simple by the E version or the, or the RAN version of what we offer. Mm -hmm. So at a customer level, you're actually bringing in the conversation of saying, you are seeing the benefits of what the product has to offer. So there are certain capabilities in the hardware itself or solution mm -hmm. itself to do that. But that's incomplete. Because Intel is all about the ecosystem. So if you look at, I mean, I was very personally very proud when we had a whole spectrum. You go and see, the, you know, Michael Dell himself was there, mm -hmm. the Lenovo CEO was there, Cisco talked about a whole set of OEMs are available. Even VMware, SAP, you know, you had the, the ISVs out there talking about what you can do with you know, Xeon Forge. And last but not least, even the hyperscalers, I mean, Microsoft, I touched upon the Microsoft Azure your discussion, mm -hmm. they're talking about how they're looking at the next generation of com you know, confidential compute using the trust domain expansion beyond the SGA. So to us, when you're talking about the channel partners, we work on an ecosystem. We want to drive the best value for the end customer, like I gave you a couple of examples, but working back through the ISVs, through the partners, and through the OEMs that we talked about.
सकते हैं विद इन टर्म्स ऑफ एफिशिएंसी इन टर्म्स ऑफ सस्टेनेबिलिटी राइट इन टर्म्स ऑफ कॉस्ट एवरी इट काइंड ऑफ टिक्स ऑल द बॉक्सेस दैट देयर आर टू बी टिक्ड थैंक्स फॉर सेइंग एंड दैट यू नो एट द सेम टाइम वी रियलाइज दैट टू बी एबल टू डू दैट इज नॉट अबाउट इंटेल इज आउट वर्किंग थ्रू दैट इकोसिस्टम एंड द ओपन सोर्स कम्युनिटी एज़ वेल टू बी एबल टू ड्राइव द आउटकम दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एब्सोल्युटली फैंटास्टिक uh thanks sumer for uh, for joining us thank you so much it was a pleasure babesh the questions were awesome and i hope you liked the discussion too thank you, thank you.